Hey guys, welcome to our YouTube channel. If you are new to our channel then don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon to get all the latest updates. We are back with a new video, and in this video, we are going to tell you about shocking Indian traditions and rituals. So without further ado let's start our video. Number 1, Jalakadu Tamil Nadu. The contestants in Jalakata compete for the reward from the bull's head. Bullfighting is the English term for it. Does it remind you of Spain? The Indian variant, on the other hand, is more harmful. During the Pondal celebration in mid-January, the game, or ritual, of Jalakatu is played. A prize is placed on the horn of a wild bull, and men race to be the first to get it. In another form, the winner is the person who can hang on to the bull or ride on it for the longest duration. There are also competitions to control the beast, without using weapons, with the winner being determined. Does it appear to be the most deadly of Indian customs? It's possible. Number 2, Thaipusam, Tamil Nadu. Thaipusam festival is celebrated in the state of Tamil Nadu, around January to February. This is a Hindu festival in which worshippers pierce their bodies with hooks and lances to praise Lord Morrigan. In Thaipusam, you can experience one of the most painful Indian traditions. People celebrate the ritual of body piercing to honor Lord Morrigan, who received a spear to kill the evil Tarakasura. During the Tamil Thai month, devotees keep fast for 48 days and pierce their body parts with vel, spears, lances, and hooks. Thaipasam is more about food for the soul than food for the body. Many also practice piercing their tongues and cheeks with skewers. As a result of which serious injuries happen and thus, hampers speech delivery. Some even try to pull vehicles or other heavy objects with a rope tied to the hooks. Number 3, Thimothy, Tamil Nadu. Thimothy is a fire walking ceremony practiced in Tamil Nadu, where the devotees walk slowly on a bed of hot coal. This ritual of walking on fire is practiced around October and November in the state of Tamil Nadu, in honor of Drupadi, wife of the Pandavas. People say the Rupadi walked on a bed of fire to prove her purity, after the Mahabharata War. The war was fought between Pandavas and Kauravas, because the Rupadi was insulted by Kauravas. The devotees believe their wish will be granted if they walk on a bed of red-hot coal and come out safe. They have to walk on it slowly and in the process, burning their feet. Many people fall and burn other body parts too. Number 4, Nag Panchami. Snake worship is yet another tradition practiced all over India. On a certain day each year, people give their offerings to the snakes, including milk. This snake festival all over India is widely followed among Indian traditions. The fifth date of the Shravan month, sometime in July-August, is marked as the day for worshipping snakes. People believe that snakes won't bite on this day and feed them milk. Funny thing is, snakes usually do not and cannot digest milk. Live snakes, without their fangs removed, are worshipped on this day. People shower flower petals on them and also haldi, turmeric, and kumkum, vermilion, powder, wishing for their long lives. Number 5, Bani Festival, Andhra Pradesh. Bani Festival, where the devotees celebrate the killing of a demon by Lord Shiva with stick fighting, is one of the unique Andhra Pradesh festivals. Around September-October, the Bani festival is conducted in Kornul, Andhra Pradesh, on Dussehra. On this day, devotees gather with lati, thick wooden sticks, at a temple in Kornul, Andhra Pradesh, to celebrate. And how does the celebration goes? They hit each other on the heads at midnight, and the celebration continues till dawn with the devotees soaked in blood holy. They do this to recall the killing of a demon by Lord Shiva. A unique way of celebration, isn't it? Number 6, Animal Weddings. Animal marriages, such as monkey marriages, are organized all over India, during the rainy season, June to September. To placate the rain god, who will then bring rain to vitalize the crops. Even with so much modernization, India is still an agricultural country. Thus, a significant part of the population depends on timely rains. An animal weddings is believed to be one of the ways to please the rain god. Yes, there is a god who brings showers, directs the monsoon winds. Unlike other traditions, animal weddings are not limited to a particular region. 
In Assam, a frog wedding is performed by Hindu marriage rituals. Same happens in Maharashtra, accompanied by a celebration. Even priests are available to do the ceremonies properly. Donkeys are married off in Karnataka and some hold dog weddings. Want to join the party? Not only animal weddings, but there also is a tradition of the human animal marriage. It is done to eliminate any risks due to the Mongol dash in their horoscope. Another practice to exorcise someone with Mongol dash is to wed him her off to a tree. Number 7, Garudan Thukam, Kerala. Garudan Thukam is one of the painful Indian traditions where the participants are hung on a pole with hooks. It is one of the traditional rituals in Kerala. Another painful ritual is the Garudan Thukam, performed on Makara Barani Day and Kumbha Barani Day in Kerala in the month of April. Artists make dance performance dressed like Garuda, Lord Vishnu's vehicle. After the dance, they are hung from a pole and taken around in a procession. Okay, what's painful about it? They hang with the help of hooks, put into their flesh on the back. Number 8, Adi Festival, Tamil Nadu. Adi Festival is one of festivals in Tamil Nadu with unique way of celebrating around July to August. The devotees gather to celebrate the protest against British by allowing the priest to perform the coconut breaking ritual on their heads. At a temple in Karur, Tamil Nadu, this relatively new tradition is being practiced. The British wanted to build a track on the ground where the temple is located, but the villagers objected. As a result, they instructed the locals to break the 187 coconut-shaped stones with their heads, preventing the construction of train tracks. And to the bad luck of British, villagers succeeded. People still follow the tradition and allow the temple's priest to break coconuts on their head. They believe it will bring good luck and health. Number 9, Madi Snana, Mangalore Karnataka. The higher caste Brahmins consume the food offered on leaves during Madi Snana. After that, the Dalits from the lowest castes roll over the leftover food. The Madi Snana, spit bath, is a ritual practiced in some regions of Karnataka in mid-December. The prasadam, food, is served on leaves, and people sit on the floor to eat it. And after the higher caste Brahmins finish their meal, the lower caste Dalits roll over the leftover food on the plates. People believe that this will cure them, get healthier and more prosperous. What's interesting is that even though the practice has been banned, the lower caste people don't want this tradition to stop. So that's all for today's video. I hope you all enjoyed it. If you like this video then hit the like button and share it with your friends and family. And do recommend us some topic as well on which you want to see the video in future. We will be back soon with a new video so till then take care and stay tuned.